If you're interested in publicity in publishing, then Anna is here to tell you more about what it's like to be a Deputy Publicity Director at Quercus at Hachette. Hope you find this useful and enjoy. Hi, my name's Anna McLaughlin and I am Deputy Publicity Director for Quercus, which is part of Hachette. And this is a role that I job share with my colleague Elizabeth Masters. So we each are in for part of the week and then we have one day where we overlap and she hands over to me for the remainder of the week. So my job is, is a publicist. Our role is to bring attention for our books in traditional media, so newspaper features and magazine features, interviews, reviews across the books pages. We also pitch to radio and television and podcasts. We're looking to place online publicity, author articles, and we work with bloggers and bookstagrammers on social media. Part of the campaign obviously would include events. So we organise events with festivals and bookshops, libraries, uh, some of those online now. Obviously COVID has changed the way that a lot of these things work. Really our job is to get attention for our books and bring them to the attention of readers who will enjoy them wherever we might find them. I began in publicity as a publicity assistant. I did some work experience in editorial and quickly realised that it wasn't for me. It was too quiet. <laughs> um, so I started as a publicity assistant at Random House uh, and worked then subsequently at uh, independent publishers, including Kyle Books and Michael O'Mara Books before going freelance for some years and then eventually um, ending up working at Quercus now. I think in publicity you need to have the ability to have a lot of balls in the air at once. There's a lot going on at any one time. Our, our inboxes are very busy. You need to be able to multitask. You're working on several books at the same time, several campaigns, which will all be at different stages. You need to be very diplomatic and you need a lot of creative thinking so that you can find your way into the book, work out how a book's going to be used uh, by by a radio producer or, or by a magazine features editor, how you can get the story of the book and the, and the author to the attention of the people who are going to want to read it. Meetings wise, we obviously have internal meetings. So we'd, we'd be at the editorial meetings, the acquisition meetings, where in the publicity department, we're there to say whether we feel a book is promotable. If we feel we can get the kind of coverage that we we would need to sell it, how we would see the publicity campaign going. So would we see serial in a national newspaper, for example? Do we think it's get, gonna get reviewed in the broadsheets or are we gonna be looking for coverage in women's magazines, a lot of festival events for the authors? How would we promote the book that we're talking about? We of course have external meetings with our authors to hatch plans for the book and with potential authors where we'll meet them and give them an idea of the kind of publicity we would like to do if we would like to publish their book in the hope that we might we might win that acquisition. We also meet with journalists and with festival planners to flag all the books that we've got coming up across our lists and the ways in which those can work for either their outlet or for the events that they're putting on that year. My favourite part of the job, two parts, which when you get a great piece of coverage, when you get someone on a, a television programme you know is going to make a real difference to them, when you secure a great big feature or a big kind of extract for a book, that feels amazing. And I also love it when you've introduced someone to a book they love. So when a blogger or a journalist comes to you and says, oh, God, you know, I really... I really loved this book. That is so exciting because you've you've put a book and a reader together and that's so satisfying and lovely. That's a lovely feeling. I think the most challenging part about publicity is that we might send out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pitches on a book and actually not get the coverage. You know, with marketing, you are deciding where to spend your budget and you are saying, right, we're going to buy this advertising and then you have that advertising. With publicity, you're pitching 
and you're hoping that the producer or the editor will pick up your idea and run with it. Most of the pitches that we send don't get any kind of response whatsoever. Some will elicit a no. Very small proportion uh, will get someone coming back saying, yes, I want to feature your author. I want to review this book. The most challenging part of the book is that often you can spend weeks and weeks working on a book and for hundreds of different reasons you know perhaps the outlet had recently done something quite similar or perhaps you had someone booked onto a television show and the news cycle means that that your author gets bumped because something's kind of dropped in that needs to be covered reactively there's all kinds of reasons why you might not get the coverage a lot of them are not due to do with how good your pitch was or whether you sent the book out at the right time whether you have done your job properly it there's there's quite a lot of luck although you knowing the right contacts can really help sometimes you can just be working so hard and not get what you feel the book and the campaign deserves in terms of media coverage and results i think that's the thing that's that's the most challenging i once had to collect some frozen grouse carcasses from Simpsons on the Strand, which is quite a posh restaurant, uh, which I didn't really realise when I turned up there in kind of a hoodie and flip flops one Saturday afternoon because we published a book about game cookery. You can't really get grouse before the shooting season starts. But in order to have a feature run in, in a colour supplement about uh, the, game, the game cookbook, we had to have the feature in the bag before the season started. So the author, uh, Clarissa Dixon Wright, pulled some strings so that we could pick up these grouse car carcasses from Simpsons on the Strand. I expected them to be just sort of grouse breasts, but they were whole birds with um, beaks and feet and feathers in this enormous box that was kind of slowly dripping blood on the northern line. I had to put them all in my freezer, get up very early, uh, pack them all into this freezer bag, a very very hot day so they were slowly defrosting in a quite smelly manner on the train and take them up to crew on a train and the whole way my real worry was that she was going to ask me to gut to, to pluck them and gut them and I didn't want to do that didn't know how to do that and was just sort of wondering whether I could say <laughs> my remit as a publicist wouldn't go quite that far. Anyway, she plucked them and, and dealt with them and it was an amazing lunch uh, and a really, really great piece of publicity. But that's probably one of the most unusual things that I've done. The thing that I still don't know about the publishing industry after 20 years is what the little squiggles that editors do on manuscripts mean. In the half of my week where I'm not working at Quirkus, I edit poetry anthologies and if my editor ever sends me back a manuscript with those those clever little squiggles that editors put on to, to show you sort of what needs to happen to the text, I have no idea what any of them mean. I think I have lots of really fun memories Sc doing school events with you know hundreds of kids that was that was challenging but really fun and really exciting taking quite well-known people to events where they were meeting people who were huge fans of them so I worked with Roger Moore did three tours with him and people were so overcome and excited to meet him at the events that was really fun and really special. I once read my teenage diary out on the one show to publicise a book called Cringe that we published at Michael O'Mara which was a collection of people's funny teenage diaries that was pretty amazing. Once I ended up uh, being on The World at One on Radio 4 where we had published a book called The Book Club Bible and they called me and I just we had this long chat and I assumed it was all just background for the item that they were doing and I was hoping they'd mention my book so again and then the guy said at the end oh can you get in a taxi and come down to Millbank in the next hour and so I ended up <laughs> being interviewed about book clubs and how everyone just drinks wine and doesn't really read the books uh, on Radio 4. So that was that was a really fun day in the office if a bit scary. The advice that I'd give to someone who wants to get into publicity is to consume media to to work out where publicists are putting books and where they are reaching audiences. And I think it's really, I think it's really important to be on social media. You don't necessarily have to have a big following or, or have to have a sort of public profile, but I think seeing what publicists are doing and what publishers are doing on there is really 
useful now that's a really kind of useful resource looking at the places where you see books what has brought a book to your attention how you know how did it get there but I think it's really important that it shouldn't just be social media and kind of new technology although that's really useful and re really good background to have you also need to be consuming traditional media and know where on Radio 5 Live you might hear authors interviewed, what, what programmes on Radio 4, where in the newspapers, in the broadsheets, can you see authors featured or articles by authors, that kind of thing, which television programmes are having authors on, uh, what women's magazines are looking for in their, in their books pages. So I think it's really important to have a very rounded view of book publicity and also sort of think about the kind of books that you don't necessarily aren't the books that you love to read. Where are people finding information about those books? I think that's really important. And the other thing is to say that it is incredibly competitive, especially at the kind of entry levels of the jobs. And just don't be disheartened and don't give up. There are there are so many uh, applicants for all the roles at the kind of entry level of publishing. If you don't get one of those roles it doesn't mean that you weren't good it, it just means that there were lots and lots and lots and lots of good applicants so not to get disheartened I think is the other thing. Which one book should everyone read is a very very different difficult question because obviously that's going to be different for everyone, everyone's tastes are different, but I wouldn't be a publicist if I didn't flag a book that I was publicising. So I'm going to choose for that. Um, I'm Sorry You Feel That Way by Rebecca Waite, which is a book published by River Run, which is an imprint of Quercus in July 2022, which is just incredibly funny, absurdist family dynamics. Uh, it's a tale of two sisters. It tackles, you know, big serious issues of uh, toxic motherhood and mental health, but it does so with a very a very deft touch. I laughed out loud and found it very, very poignant. So obviously, if you ask a publicist, they're going to say a book that they're publicising is the one book that everyone should read.